So we'll get some more rotobroach action here. So now we're, we're stood up and we're going to cut this radius here and this radius here. And this is really starting to give us our final shape of the, of the jaw there, okay? Now I've already done one, um, so you guys can kind of see what it looks like there, okay? So that, that jaw is just really starting to emerge there. And then uh, on this particular one, one of our last cuts is, uh, is kind of that circular thing there. We're gonna do that a little differently though. Um, so I'm going to show that next is, uh, um, this was actually kind of an interesting problem is how to get that line on there, believe it or not, because we're changing elevations. So, um, anyway, it's kind of a fun little problem. I'll show you how I, uh, how I solved that and, uh, how I went about doing that. So let's, let's knock this hole in first, or these two holes in, and, um, uh, and then we'll move on to, uh, cutting, uh, uh, this radius in this one, and then this one to get, say, uh, so this is a concave and this one's convex and this one. So I gotta make sure I had to mark the ends. Yeah, fixed jaw, moving jaw. You gotta be careful at this point, you know, they're, they're going to separate very soon here uh, into their constituent jaws and you don't wanna, you don't want uh, Bozo the Clown visiting you at uh, this point in time here. I'm gonna use a little flood cool, you know, a little, little misty cooling on this. It just, uh, makes things go a little nicer so get up around 200 I think and make sure my vice is tight I'm on my number and let's off we go now once again we're cutting a partial hole here but the uh, the rotor brooches don't, uh, don't really care. Hey, watch out there, Mr. Ruby. <laughs> Hold on. Shut that off here. I might have almost made a, made a mistake, but, uh, yeah, look at that. Some of the gun. Oh, yeah, all right. No, I'm good. So it's dimensioned differently on this particular drawing here. It's showing one inch to the radius instead of one inch two one nine, but it's dimensioned from that back face of that jaw. So psych <laughs> on my part, I psych myself out. So, uh, but that's okay. I could do something about it. I could move closer, but uh, boy, it's harder to move farther away. <laughs> All right. One thing I don't like about these uh, um, these lock lines is uh, if you want to just move them a little bit, they don't they don't care for it.
cool. All right, so there's the two cuts. And then there's the trippy looking slugs that came out of there, huh? Now, if somebody asked you to make those, that would be a tricky job, wouldn't it? <laughs> but look at that. That thing doesn't care whether it's a half a hole or a partial hole or a thin edge or whatever. They just march through all that stuff. Pretty neat. All right. So there's with the radiuses cut in that direction. So now we got uh, one more to do here. And in this one here, you can see I've marked the line on there. We need to do that on this one. And then this one here is a little different. This is the moving jaw. And this one goes kind of like that. Actually, that's not, <laughs> not a bad line. <laughs> Or do you say so myself? Okay, so in this case here, we're going to remove all that material. And uh, in this case here, we're going to remove that material there. Well, same side anyway. All right, so um, we're actually ready now to, we got to do a little bit of weird layout here. And uh, hopefully the camera will pick up on this here. So. We're looking at this radius right here, the back here of the uh, fixed jaw. We want to mark that radius so that we can remove that material. This one here, we'll just, we're going to do that one by hand because we know where, where it, it's tangent to this radius and it's tangent to that surface. So that one's pretty easy to deal with, um, you know, when we're doing the, uh, the rounding of, uh, of this jaw. But let's, uh, let's mark this one off here. And um, it's actually kind of a tricky problem because, uh, you know, we've got these varying elevations here. In fact, it's a curve along a curve and then up a slope and then onto that, right? So how the heck do you do that? You can't just lay a circle on here and mark it. Well, you could and get a reasonable mark. Um, what I would like to do, ideally, is take uh, a little long nose marker like this and rotate it through a nice clean arc and have it kind of track up and down the thing, right? Kind of like one of those uh, those pin gauges uh, templates, right? But this is on a particular radius. So, you know, so it can accommodate the different elevations. So, what I did was I made a little, uh, a little spinner here, okay? And this is just whipped together real quick just to kind of try it out. And uh, this fits in the spindle. Let's go ahead and we'll put that in there. Oops. Fits in the spindle and we can turn it. Okay, and then uh, what I can do is I can insert this little monkey in here like that. Okay. And I can secure that in there. It's got a little cylindrical shank on it so you can do something with it. So now I got to set the radius. How do I do that, right? Well, we kind of know how to do that. Um, we know that. Uh, um, if we move off the part, the correct radius, then uh, and then we can adjust just in a similar way that we did the boring head. We can adjust this, right? So it's got a little a little clamp collar here. I can loosen that and see. I can move that in and out, right? And change the radius. So let's uh, let's get on uh, let's get on a radius there. And what is our radius? Our radius is 1.25. Okay, so moving to DRO, 1.25. And then ideally, I think I want to, uh, let's see, what do, yeah, I need something to, uh, I need something to gauge on there. So, blah, blah, blah. Well, we could do that. That would probably work. So how far down is that? That is about a half inch down. All right, we're just going to go over to about a half inch. Let's try this and see how it looks. Gonna drop that down and get it close. Okay, and then I'm going to scoot that out till actually it's probably better if I cut a little less of a radius and then it leaves me room to uh, to uh, to grind and uh, you know and finish that. All right, so actually let's uh, I'm going to come over on this surface and we'll just draw draw a circle and we're just going to measure it. <laughs> Hopefully. I want to crank 
crash my uh, my my cool point there. Ooh, looks like it's this gonna make. All right, so it's a really expensive compass. All right, so that's a little small. It's two and three a's. I'm gonna scoot it out. Of, well, you know what? That's not too bad. That's probably all the closer I want to be to that, huh? Because that's only uh, two and three eighths is only sixteenth off that radius, right? You know what? I'm just gonna leave it there. I think I'd rather be a little bit small in this situation, and then um, um, you know have a little extra material to take away when I'm um, when I'm working that. So I think that's gonna work. So let's uh, let me reframe it, and uh, we'll come and make that mark. All right. So I'm in position. Let's try this thing here. I'm gonna be a little careful because I can I can damage my. Uh, my nice marker here really easily so let's do the easy part first all right I'm touching touching I mean if this thing was spring-loaded that would be really super cool Okay. All right, let's see if we got most of it. Oh yeah, that's pretty good. All right, it's not bad, huh? So, just so you guys can see it here, let me take this out. I'll rotate that. Uh, looks like a radius to me, right? Cool. All right. So anyway, that's how I marked it. Now, um, um, hopefully that mark will stay. <laughs> Take this out. I don't want this thing drying out on me. So that's uh, this uh, long nose marker, pattern marker. It's made by uh, uh, Fast Cap. Uh, th these are pretty cool. Um, I think it's is it FastCap.com. Yeah, FastCap.com. And uh, these are these long nose pattern markers. I've uh, I got a couple of them, and uh, I'm actually I've uh, been using them for quite a few things. So that's uh, that scribe line is the end of the part. Okay, so let's see if you can see it there. There's the scribe line. There's our radius. So this is the material we have to get rid of up to that scribe line. That's where we cut the part off, actually. So inch and a half from there. Uh, so all this is still just grab stock, and our final cut is to sever. Um, well, this set, it's going to be this little cut right here between that black line and uh, that little radius. Is bloop, That's what we have to cut off, which ain't much. So we're going to mill at this this way. I don't have a cutter this big, so we're just going to uh, um, use an end mill and just mow that material out of there and just get close to the line. And then uh, we'll sep separate the part, and then we'll finish that, uh, that radius by hand with uh, sanding and files and, uh, and whatnot. So that will be the next step.